Hi, my name is Sam Stark, and uh, I go to Nichols School in Buffalo, New York. My name is Jacob Zarzecki. I also go to Nichols School in Buffalo, New York. And I'm Patrick Hammond. I'm a Tufts University student, and I was their advisor for the Saudi Arabian delegation. So, guys, we uh, face quite a bit of challenges in terms of being Saudi Arabia in a conference on Iraq, and uh, quite a tense history between the two. So, uh, particularly on the issue of oil, um, Jake, I know we had some difficulty in a deal we were initially trying to, to broker on oil. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we, uh, we're having disagreement between uh, Saudi Arabia and the, the Dawa party of Iraq, who's currently in power. And uh, at first, we wanted to uh, actually fix the price so they couldn't undercut us, but that turned, we, that turned out to be illegal under international law, so we couldn't do that. Um, and then we, and then under, we made a proposition for water cleaning and that, which also had an oil component. And I'd say about at this time, I, I stepped in and uh, joined uh, Jake in the, uh, in his conference, which is a resources conference. And, uh, and there was, it was pretty chaotic, I'd say probably epitomizing what the UN actually uh, would, would be at this time. And I noticed that, uh, you know, even though we might not believe this in real life, you're taking the perspective of Saudi Arabia and we had to be a firm stance. We didn't want Iraq undercutting uh, our, oils, our oil uh, supply. And they were saying uh, what we thought were two uh, unrealistic and idealistic demands. And we tried to, uh, get other nations such as the United States uh, to, to back us and not pass this deal. And as you'll find, uh, people can change their minds as the United States did. And uh, they eventually, uh, they passed this uh, deal that had uh, Iraq trading um, uh, oil, uh, which will help the Iraqi economy with the uh, um, United States for uh, United States giving technology for clean water. It's a good thing, uh, but from the perspective of Saudi Arabia, it was a challenge, and it was, uh, and uh, we lost that battle. Actually, we were we were against the Dow, the party leading it, but, uh, and we went around to committees or delegations um, asking for their, asking them to vote no, and we had enough votes, no votes to, not pass it, but, like Sam said. Uh, the United States ended up turning around and switching there. I think it, I think at times you find that you, even though you take one step back, you might have to give in a little. In the end, it actually works in your favor, and you can get two steps forward. In the end, we uh, we we got some huge deals, eventually isolating uh, Iran, uh, which is a hu a big enemy of uh, Saudi Ara <coughs> Saudi Arabia. Uh, we made sure that Iraq would have some uh, Sunni. Uh, 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 more rights for the Sunni people, and it really contributed to, uh, I would say, a favorable perspective for Saudi Arabia. It's a lot about deals and about uh, overcoming uh, smaller challenges to, to do well on the big ones. Yeah, it's a lot about uh, to keep going forward and look at the big picture and get past small difficulties. So definitely, uh, I think we saw that when we met as a, as a delegation and trying to advise you guys on what to do in each of these sort of deals was difficult. Um, how, was, uh, how was getting new information while in a committee and, and sort of having to adjust uh, on the fly to emerging uh, crises like uh, Iran pulling out of nuclear negotiations? Well, uh, many times there were game changers. Like uh, when Iran first said that they were going to provide yeah. weapons, to Iraq that we actually had passed a, the water cleaning bill right before and then that we got that information and everyone wanted to pull out so it changed everything yeah as a being being Saudi Arabia you you sometimes uh, you sometimes see that uh, although you're in a favorable position you know because you have a lot of money it's not always uh, not always everybody agrees with you and with I, Iraq and Iran both having uh, uh, a Shia majority in their populations, they seem to get a connection, but we knew 
that if we, uh, if we were to work around those problems and we work with uh, uh, different factions in Iraq that have either Sunni or more progressive uh, uh, regimes and, uh, uh, and our progressive parties and worked with other countries around like Jordan, uh, who we knew we could rely on, uh, we were able to eventually uh, isolate Iran uh, and uh, through giving uh, money to a faction in, uh, in Iraq, uh, the, the Iraqi... Um, uh, the Iraqi Accord Front? Accord Front, yeah, we gave them $50 million and they uh, provided infrastructure for Sunni refugees uh, and that made a lot of Middle Eastern uh, uh, countries very uh, uh, happy and it eventually led to uh, a very favorable deal, I would say, for, for, for Saudi Arabia. And by the end, I think we got past a lot of our differences, yeah. and we actually gave more money to uh, develop their infrastructure exactly. throughout the country. And that isn't to say that, I have to say, it's a brutal... There, it's not just... People, I think, tend to oversimplify the Middle East. It's not just they're Sunni, they're Shiite, they disagree. There is much more... Uh, internal conflicts that has to do with, uh, or, and external conflicts that can't be just explained by uh, apple and apple. And, you know, you sometimes have to work with apples and oranges, and the, the, it, it gets complicated. You know, one, one party believes this, but they don't believe that part. You can't get everything, and you have to work with dealing with stuff. I remember uh, there was a little point where there was a little filibustering and, uh, and you know, people trying to delay to uh, attempt to... Uh, you know, not have a bill pass right away because you you want so much for your own country that, and you can see how there's so many problems with in the Middle East, which is actually is in our own country as well. You don't, it's not just distant there. Our own country in in the U.S. Congress has similar problems passing bills. It's uh, at times ineffective, but if you can make deals, it's a lot about um, you might not get everything, but you get what you need. You get what uh, is most effective for your country, and I think that's what we. Uh, to do. So, would you say this is your first year, guys, doing the inquiry? Would you say you enjoyed it? Yeah, it was our s s school's first year, actually, and I think it was a great experience. Definitely. Be here at Tufts. Yeah, I, I definitely. I think they go on for years to come. Yeah, Tufts is lucky to have uh, such a great, or uh, maybe not lucky, maybe they earned it, but uh, to have such a great uh, foreign uh, policy program. I know the Fletcher is a well-known uh, program, uh, but people. Uh, uh, like all of our mentors and that have helped us along the way, they they really uh, inspire us. We had a little pause in the action for about ten minutes, and I, I was able to ask you know, all these different questions, and you guys you, you answered every single one of my questions. Even the questions that you know I thought were kind of weird and were people wouldn't exactly get because uh, I have different perspectives from my own home. Uh, they gave me a new insight, and I realized oh I'm not I'm not always right about. Uh, uh, what I what I perceive or maybe it's not just a right and wrong. Maybe it's just a different perspective that I learned and I think that's valuable